This news program is proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and M Now Biscuits. National Health Plan discussed. Higher education funding programs explained. And Unitech students stabbed in lay. A very good evening. This is National MTV News. I'm Grace Papiali. Thank you for joining us. The Secretary for National Department of Health, Dr. Osborne Liko, has stated that the National Health Plan and all corporate health plans are largely dependent on the country's total population and hopes that the June census will provide this information to guide this. Secretary Liko stated that the health plan was initially done for 9.2 million people using previous population data. However, when using the electronic national health information system, a population of 10,108,200 was recorded. Dr. Liko explains further. The ENHIS is set up to gather detailed monthly reports from over 800 health facilities, including sub-health centers, on a wide variety of conditions, and in some provinces, data entry on tablets has now been introduced at the health facility level with the aim to improve the timeliness and accuracy of health statistics. Dr. Liko stated that despite this, records from several organizations show different figures, which is a posing challenge to the accuracy of the health statistics. Going forward, some projections being that our population is at 11 million, and even some, um, some um, estimate being done by other par par partners have actually put our population at 17 million. So where do we stand at this point in time in terms of having our you know, national health plan? That also will have the reflections of our, our corporate plans because the denominator being the population is the biggest challenge for us. The National Statistics Office will be carrying out census in June and Dr. Liko is hopeful that this will help guide further plans for the National Department of Health. Uh, the, last, the last week um, on Thursday, our Prime Minister have actually launched for this year, June 2024, our national census. Hopefully that will give us some clear guidelines as we have to readjust our corporate plans, national plan, and of course every other effort we're putting in in the population so that it will give us clear uh, indications in making our plans, uh, putting our budgets and everything else that, that matters in regard to the population. Francisca Anania, National MTV News. With the current weather pattern unpredictably changing between drizzly and hot seasons, there are 100% there chances of catching symptoms such as influenza and fever. Pacific International Hospital Head of Emergency Department, Dr. John Sipero, is making a call to adhere to simple preventative health measures to avoid catching these symptoms. In an interview with this newsroom, Dr. Chiperao stated that these health procedures are simple yet have a positive impact on one's health. Firstly, avoiding uh, cold weather, uh, especially for kids, they shouldn't go out and uh, play in the rain uh, too long or not at all. Uh, warm clothes during uh, cold uh, uh, weather. And if somebody has cold, uh, to avoid giving it to others by covering their mouths or wearing masks when they are out in a crowded environment. He said viruses thrive in cold weather conditions. Hence, these measures play a crucial role in maintaining good health. Dr. Chiperao stated in a normal 12-hour shift, he attends to 20 patients seeking medical assistance or have come down with symptoms associated with influenza and fever. However, he says that some cases are unreported. 
He also called on mothers to provide the best care for their babies during this unpredictable weather. Uh, babies are what we call obligate nasal breeders, meaning that they only know how to breathe through their nose. So when they catch a cold and flu, and they have a stuffy nose, and they get congested, they find it very hard to breathe. And so they will become very restless uh, very quickly, and they won't be able to sleep, or, or some of them may not feed at all. So preventing uh, babies from getting the cold and flu viruses is very important. He said parents have been reporting to the PIH emergency department with their babies suffering from blocked nose and posing breathing difficulties. Gladys Killer, National MTV News. The people along the Ramu River are still affected by the flood that struck the villages along the banks of the river last month. The flood destroyed homes, gardens and schools. However, they have not received any relief assistance since. A head teacher of a primary school along the banks of the Lower Ram River in the Bogia district of Medang traveled into Medang town to appeal to the responsible authorities to assist the people along the river who have been hit badly by floods since last month. Benjamin Dranba serves as the head teacher of Kayoma Primary School in Bogia district. Said as a local of the area, this is the worst flood he has ever experienced. And first time through this la flood, and when I come up, all get a high, high level when I stop your ground here. Now all get a water been up him. Dranba said schools in the area have been told to close down due to the flood. He continued and said he almost lost his own daughter who is doing grade two and was making her way to school by canoe. He said the flood destroyed some learning materials and submerged food gardens, leaving the people with almost nothing to eat. The flood also caused many people to fall sick, but there are no medical supplies to treat them. Also, Martin wanted to teach me to walk along the pool, go calm, I walk along the passing pool, canoe, long side block classroom, and then I will go inside the whole girls' classroom, plop, long or stall on the ground here. I'm hardly missing up because what I'm go extra. The teacher said they have reported the matter to the provincial disaster office and they were told to just wait. Meanwhile, he said he has received word from the village that the water level is rising again. Dranba was accompanied by a youth from the area, Martin Wyok, who assisted him to contact this newsroom. Wyok said food is becoming scarce in the area and something should be done immediately to assist the people. Over the tiger and finish. Now old man Mary start to steal the one man or garden or start to leave the tiger or trip and start to man or steal the whole of frostbite or just kind of start to help him. If you like him or some government must area to step in to help him. It's possible to waste time to help him and family like the big black. Edson Kuso, National MTV News. The International Operations for Migration has come to the aid of the natural disaster-stricken Simbu with relief supplies. Simbu Provincial Disaster Committee Deputy Chairman Chris Mondo and George Grayson, the Disaster and Emergency Operations Control Center Coordinator, were present at Mount William Hotel to receive the relief supplies. Four truckloads of relief supplies all packed into synthetic bags containing blankets, utensils, water containers and shelter startup kits were received and stored at the DEOCC awaiting distribution to communities that were affected. Mondo, who is also the provincial deputy administrator to field services, thanked the IOM for the timely assistance which would go towards assisting the affected people during this time of aftershock. The wet weather included land slips in the province were reported in mid-March resulting in 24 people assumed dead, roads cut off, food gardens washed away and people displaced. Mondo stated 241 families have been affected from the disaster in Gambolga and Gumini districts. Mr. Grayson said the relief supplies will be distributed immediately to the affected families in Gambolg and Gumini. 
IMO Field Office Coordinator Sebastian Urokoli said IMO officers will be on site at distribution points to get registration of affected people receiving their relief supplies. However, he stated there are many more others affected and proper data is to be collected for securing additional supplies for those missing out. Gladys Kila, National MTV News. The government of Papua New Guinea has been commended for being responsive to people affected by natural disasters in the country through the United Nations Humanitarian Organization. During his recent visit to the province, PM Marape allocated 13 million from the 2024 recurrent budget to Simbu for relief assistance with another 76 million kina from the 500 million national disaster funds towards rehabilitation of the national highway and bridges in the province. The district's MPs have also made funding allocations to their respective districts. Among them, Gumini MP and Minister for Education Lucas Dekena mobilized 5 million kina to Gumini. International Operations Migration Program Manager Michael Asima praised the combined efforts announced at the government level to provide relief to people affected by the natural calamity. Asima, upon his visit, was received by Simbu Provincial Administrator John Punde with his deputy Chris Mondo. Punde and Mondo are on their toes taking full charge of the Provincial Disaster Committee that is working relentlessly in providing assistance to communities that are affected by landslides that kill 24 people. Asima and his officers were briefed on the level of support given by ward level to local level governments, the district, the provincial government and the national government by Mr. Punde. The Simbu provincial government initially allocated 2.3 million kina to assist in the immediate response in stabilizing and continuing government services such as education and health. Punde stated that currently the Disaster Committee is assessing information to assist displaced families. Gladys Kila, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. The Smart Start School promotion is back this year. Win yourself one of 1,000 consolation prizes valued at 50 kina each nationwide. And the school with the highest number of valid entries per region will win a 44,000 kina Smart Start School grant. Simply collect three empty packets of Smart Start breakfast biscuits. Put in an envelope with your name, school and number on the envelope and drop in an entry box at a participating school near you. Promo ends on the 22nd of April. Contact us on Facebook to register your school today. Terms and conditions apply. Buy more, win more, one time rules rise. We have half money mark below 300,000 kina. No can miss out. Buy 10 kg roots with them grain rice. Cut them round in big the roots logo on top long front long back rice. Now write the name, none of them long you long backside long app. Drop them inside long entry box long store. Week one draw, one one winner by XC 500 kina. Week two draw, 1,000 kina. Week three draw, 2,000 kina. Now long week four draw, 5,000 kina. Second Roots Rice Facebook page, don't kiss him, more talk savvy. Tell the conditions is tough. Remember the joy of playing with your toys as a child? At Morning Plus, we believe that every small business deserves a chance to build and grow. That's why we offer asset financing. Now chance to building something new, to see a different point of view. Mipla Halivim Water Belong You. Rurokomotis presents Aizuzu NPR Cargo Truck. Now available for only 140,000 kina. 
built for tough terrains and heavy loads, the Isuzu NPR comes with a 4x2 2022 manual transmission, single cap, right-handed steering, and a maximum performance output of 89 kilowatts. Isuzu NPR Cargo Truck, PNG's number one truck. Visit Borough Commodus today for more information. The National Statistical Office is conducting a nationwide search to recruit data collectors to take part in the 2024 National Population Census in June. Applicants must have the following. Be between 18 and 45 years old, a minimum of grade 10, be physically fit and healthy, must not have a speech disorder, be good at public speaking and interacting with people, confident to use an Android phone or tablet, and have previous experience in data collection. If you want to be a data collector in the 2024 National Population Census, pick up an application form at the provincial headquarters or download it at www.nso.gov.pg. Fill the application form and submit with your updated CV to the Provincial Census Coordinator or the Provincial Recruitment Coordinator at your provincial headquarters. Applications close 19th April 2024. This message is endorsed by the Office of the National Statistician. Sports Max, 7.30 p.m. Wednesday, right here on the number one to watch, MTV. You're watching National MTV News. Minister for Higher Education, Research, Science, Technology and Sports, Don Polier, provided an overview of the substantial investment made by the Marape Rosso government in human resources, particularly through programs like the TESIS and HELP. He provided this overview today in Port Mosby. Minister Polier highlighted when speaking to the media today that Papua New Guinea government's directive investment in human resources is evident through its provision of financial support for programs such as the Tertiary Education Student Assistance Scheme and the Higher Education Loan Program. Because I'm seeing uh, positive uh, progress in the growth uh, you know, of the number of students that are enrolled at our universities and at our TVETs and colleges, it's a good news. Um, um, but the challenge I have is to make sure that they continue uh, to get the quality um, skills that developed in them and at the same time expand uh, the enrollment's capacity in those institutions. The minister also shared details regarding the investment and its positive impact on the nation's human capital. So it's a, it's a good uh, progress over the last uh, few years. Uh, we are humbly increasing the number of students' enrollment at the financial um, uh, investments that we are making. I'm happy as a minister responsible that I'm seeing a positive growth there um, in the number of enrollment. He stressed that the total TESIS funding for 2024 has already been fully dispersed to the Department of Higher Education and will be benefiting a total of 58 institutions across the country. Minister Polia also stressed on the HELP funding. Uh, this year, 2024, 50 million has been allocated to support 14,836 students. In addition to disbursing funds, Minister Polia stated that they are currently finalizing regulations for both help and tests to improve efficiency and transparency in the allocation process. These measures will ensure that financial support is distributed equitably and effectively to those who need it most. Louis Mangu, National MTV News. Meanwhile, Minister Paulier clarified that since the inception of the HELP program, students who received the loan and completed their studies and are now working did not repay the HELP loan because of the structure. They are now working on the structure to get students repay the loans. We do not have a structured system in place. Therefore, um, I'm very happy with the uh, secretary uh, that we are putting in a structure in place. A financing structure, but also a money recouping structure. So you have an evolving fund like the Sovereign Wealth Fund. 
Uh, I was uh, one of those uh, major contributors to uh, structuring the Sovereign Wealth Fund, uh, which is not effectively used at the moment, but this is what uh, the similar thing we're doing at the education in the help. We like to have a similar principal fund uh, available so the students can pay uh, back. So that's the first reason. A uh, second reason is that most of the students that we've been giving them uh, loans have not been employed or still uh, in the uh, the in the training in the in the institutions uh, training. Furthermore, Minister Polier has raised a serious concern regarding attacks by certain locals towards students from the University of Garoka. We'll develop it. That's why. Minister Polier highlighted that it has come to his attention that certain locals are threatening students. He mentioned that a student had passed away a few months back in the hands of locals and recently another student was stabbed by locals at the Goroka market. He further elaborated. Me as minister in this education space to see local people hurting students rather than looking after them it is very embarrassing and shameful to me. Minister Polia appealed to the people of Eastern Highlands Province, especially locals in Goroka, to look after the students and staff and the university itself. That is the only university that you have in your province. Whether the university expands and grows, although it diminishes into nothing, it depends on how you look after it there. As a community of Eastern Highlands, especially the community around the market and the periphery, around the university. He further explained how students from the UOG can provide business income for the people of Goroka. Students, I see them being lodged by locals, and you're getting some rent out of the students for uh, giving accommodation uh, to, to set the students. Come to, this is good money coming to you, and it's creating you some economy. But for... Uh, others, not all of you, but for some of you, to uh, stabbing students and arresting students is something that I find is very uncivilized and it is a, a act of uh, weak people and that should not happen. He extended a word of thank you to the doctors and nurses for helping the student who was stabbed recently. He also said that it was advised that the student is in a stable condition. Louis Mangu, National MTV News. In relation to the challenges faced by the University of Garoka students, Minister Polier expressed disappointment to the government offices responsible for the delay, for the delay of the 10 million Kina disaster relief fund promised for the university to replace the dormitory damaged by the earthquake in 2022. Minister Polia emphasized that, as Minister for Higher Education, he cannot tolerate the government's system that are failing to administer the policies of the government. The time that I should have delivered the 10 million kina was 2022, or could have been in 23 budget. But 2024, not even money released, and a student being stabbed, another killed, and both students leaving from outside to go in. If they had been accommodated around the campus, the situation would be different. He explained this further. The Prime Minister would like to implement things efficiently and effectively. I as Minister have a mission to making sure I achieve my objectives. Because I have a reputation and I have an integrity. And that is measured by how much and when and how it delivered those service to the people of this country. Meanwhile, Minister Polier indicated that he is happy that the Minister for Treasury and Prime Minister, James Marape, will release the 10 million kina. Prime Minister now is also the Minister for Treasury. Uh, he is uh, given me his undertaking last uh, Friday or Thursday that he will release the 10 million kina to UOG directly or to D has to administer to F temporary accommodations are put uh, for the students on the campus. So in that way, it's a measure uh, to, uh, to, to stop, to prevent um, students uh, being exposed uh, because they're living off the campus.
Minister Poya stated that the Minister for Treasury and Prime Minister James Marape has confirmed to release the fund on Tuesday this coming week. Louis Mangu, National MTV News. The Vice President of the University of Technology and Students and Staff Association, Junior Tep, has succumbed to an untimely death in the early hours of Saturday morning at the Angao Memorial Provincial Hospital in Lei. This was confirmed by a student leader of the association who wishes to remain anonymous. In a phone interview this morning with the student leader of the association, he revealed that the late Junior Tap's untimely passing occurred outside the school premises. Late Junior was a third-year civil engineering student and also served as the vice president of the UOT Anger Student and Staff Association. The source described the deceased as someone who was passionate about doing educational awareness back in his own province. Today he would be someone who... Uh, you know, he, he doesn't want violence or that he would al always call for peace, always want a better society. Um, he was always discussing ideas with me about, you know, going back home and doing awareness and uh, giving the opportunity for more students from the village to come and study in institutions. And he would discuss ideas about uh, doing school awareness, education awareness. He added that this untimely passing of late Junior Tap will leave a great void in the associations that he was involved in. Untimely passing, I think it's a huge loss for um, the association, the student body, uh, the university as a whole, his family, his tribe and his province as well. So it will be a huge void to feel vacuum to feel if someone were to step up to his caliber. The student leader said the members of the student association that the late junior tap was a part of is still coming to terms with the sudden passing of their student leader. The student leader has deemed the untimely passing of the vice president of UOT ESSA, the late junior tap, as unrelated to any tribal fights. I'd like to give assurance to the student body that um, it's nothing related to ethnic violence, all that, or tribal fighting, all that. With, with uh, um, recent media headlines published about uh, tribal fighting in Nega, most students are concerned that it might be related to that. But we just want to dispel rumors and, uh, you know, guesses and misleading reports that it's nothing to do with tribal fight or ethnic clash. He also said that an urgent meeting will be conducted in the campus to clear any false speculations surrounding the death of the late junior tap and also make awareness on the safety of students within the campus. He added that the Criminal Investigation Division in Lay has launched an investigation into this untimely passing. The student leader urges students to take precautions when leaving the school campus. Malinta Yopolo, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Dear son, you ask me how I live such a good life. Yes, I've had some good luck, like the day I met your mother. But it wasn't always that way. I've made some good choices too, like working hard and keeping my super with Nasfan. They looked after it for me, which meant I could concentrate on looking after my family. Living each day, knowing that when the time came, I'd be ready for tomorrow. Love, Dad. 
Mamas One Time Telecom's Goodplum Mobile Data Plans. With eight exclusive mobile data plans to choose from, select a plan that best suits your budget. You can purchase a plan for as low as 3 Kina for 1 gigabyte of data valid for 24 hours or receive 130 gigabyte of data valid for 30 days for only 150 Kina. Telecom, connecting you anywhere, anytime. Terms and conditions apply. Buy more, win more one time rules rise. We have half money mark below 300,000 kira. No can miss out. Buy 10 kg roots medium grain rice. Cut them round in big pair roots logo on top long front long back rice. Now write the name Nana Mas long your long backside long app. Drop them inside long empty box long store. Week one draw, one one winner by XM 500 kina. Week two draw, 1,000 kina. Week three draw, 2,000 kina. Now long week four draw, 5,000 kina. Second Roots Rice Facebook page, don't kiss him, more talk seven. Tabs the conditions is start. Attention business leaders, the 39th Australia Papua New Guinea Business Forum and Trade Expo. From May 13th to 15th on Australia's dazzling Gold Coast. Dive into the immersive experience of our Trade Expo and showcase your brand, connect with like-minded professionals and seize the moment to tap into the flourishing bilateral business environment. But hurry, reserve your spot now to secure your stay at the Sheraton. Register today for the Australia PNG Business Forum. Power Energy Drink. Feel the power. Asian Development Bank is a international financial institution. It's a multilateral development bank that is owned by 68 member countries. The main mandate of ADB is actually you know, to help create a, a prosperous, inclusive region. What we do is we provide uh, financing, we provide uh, technical assistance, and uh, we provide, uh, we facilitate partnership. That's on Monday night. You're watching National MTV News. The managing director of Mel Research and Marketing Consultant Limited, Michael Mel, has acknowledged all state-owned enterprises in the country that have contributed tremendously towards the successful production and launching of the Mel Review magazine. Mr. Mel extended his heartfelt thanks to the Kumul Consolidated Holdings and its SOE partners, Minister Responsible for SOE William Duma and KCH Managing Director David Kavanamur for the tremendous support ensuring the magazine passed through necessary process until the launching on the 4th of this month. I would not have produced this magazine if it is not for a team of good publicans. We have a team of good Papua New Guineans, of mixed qualification. We've come together to produce this magazine. According to magazine owner Michael Mel, this edition is a testament to MRMC's resilience and commitment, overcoming challenges since 1993. Recognizing the pivotal role KCH plays, Mel says this review captures reports of all SOE and government ministries in the country providing readers with insights into the current government's direction since 2019. I've dedicated this edition to the government, the SOEs, mostly government-related organizations' performance in this country. I feel that there's a call to, to put the government's performance record into proper perspective. Mr. Mel also underlined this publication corresponds Mel Research and Marketing Consultant Limited's 30th anniversary marking three decades of dedicated consultancy services. Gladys Killer, National MTV News.
Veteran Governor of Anga Province, Sepita Ipatas, has confirmed the visit of Australian High Commissioner to Papua New Guinea, His Excellency John Fix, to Wabeg, Anga Province, on Wednesday, the 10th to the 11th of April, 2024. The visit of His Excellency John Fix will be his first to the province. Governor Sir Peter Ipatas was pleased to inform this newsroom on this, stating that Anga is ready to receive the High Commissioner. We will visit some of the projects that we partnered uh, the uh, the Australian government, and that are specific uh, projects in the province, uh, range from the uh, water market, the uh, uh, nursing college, or it used to be nursing college, part of a uh, university, innovative university of Angana. Uh, uh, the teachers college used to be the teachers college, now part of the uh, university. And of course, the new hospital that uh, they also partnered us. And also uh, pay a visit to the museum where they also uh, to build the, uh, Se Peter Ipeta stressed that this visit will provide the opportunity to have an open dialogue on a number of aspects in the province, one of them being law and order. Those are some projects that you will visit, but it will be good for uh, him as the Australian government representative to see some of our developments taking place and appreciate what is going on in the province so that. Um, if they can assist us in terms of uh, this infrastructure development as well as uh, our issues on law and order. About 80 casual staffs from the Flexible Open and Distance Learning, or FOD, gathered in front of the FOD headquarters in Port Mosby at around 8 o'clock this morning for a clean-up. The cleanup started at around half past eight this morning, with the casual staff arrive as early as eight o'clock at the front of the Ford headquarter. Administration assistant and casual staff supervisor Mrs. Anna Eli organized four hand gloves and rubbish bags to be provided for all casual staff participating in the cleanup. This is Mrs. Eli sharing more on the occasion this morning. I just took this initiative because every time I walk here, walk to the office, I see this rubbish every time piling up. So I just used it, my initiative today to use the casuals to come out and clean this place. Mrs. Eli shared that after the COVID-19 outbreaks, the front of the Ford headquarters had become a marketplace for many bitternut sellers and other street vendors, resulting in a dirty and filthy place. On the other thing, I, I don't want any uh, street sellers to come and sell bitternuts and uh, goods here because that's how it's creating this uh, rubbish. Junior Ray Goa has been employed as a casual staff with Ford since 2020. He shares his thoughts on the cleanup and what he does as a casual staff. Uh, yes, I'm really happy that our place is clean. and I, I think tomorrow students are going to come and say the place is clean, they'll be also happy. Goa stated that most of the casual staff involved traveled in from several of the central villages and many parts of the city to work on the weekends as per their contracted times, doing compiling, stapling, printing and packaging of students' learning materials for all food centers around the country. The cleanup ended at around 10 o'clock this morning and the casual staff resumed their normal duties. Francisca Anania, National MTV News. Foreign Affairs Minister Justin Chuchenko held bilateral talks with his Philippine counterpart, Foreign Affairs Secretary Enrique Manalo, in the Philippines' capital of Manila recently. In the meeting, Chuchenko advocated PNG support to Philippines to follow the rule of law in the West Philippine Sea. The territorial dispute involves several sovereign states that share the naval border. Secretary Manalo updated Minister Chuchenko 
Chochenko on the challenges faced by the Philippines in the West Philippine Sea and discussed possible defense cooperation among other areas to improve bilateral relations between both countries. National MTV News continues after the break with Trukai Sports. Stay with us. Accept the challenge. Choose PNG's favorite purified bottled water. True True Wara, 100% PNG made. Proudly bottled by Paradise Foods. Experience a convenient and smarter way to do your banking with BSB Mobile Banking. You don't have to leave the office or your home to pay for bills. You can view your account balance, transfer funds, top up phone credits, or purchase easy pay units wherever you are. Visit your BSB branch today to register now for BSB Mobile Banking. BSB Mobile Banking, the smarter way to bank. BSB, our bank, our people. National Population Census Ibai Kamapo June 2024 and National Statistic Office Iwo Kong Painimong Kutpulaman Meri Pusat Ibai Making Work Location Data Inside Long 11 Board na LNT Belong All You in up long apply suppose Christmas Belong You is up na mel long 18 na 45 years You must finish in grade 10 school or end up You must fit na healthy na no got heavy long eye You must again talk to good na clear long eye belong all man Meri You must get experience long kissing data or survey before You must get one pillar bank account Na you must get survey long using more and machine all same Android phone or tablet too. Suppose you think all same you in up long making work long census 2024, you can go kiss him application form on provincial NSO office close to long you or you can download him long www.nso.gov.pg. Pull him up in this perform na sunny wanted CV belong you e long provincial census coordinator or provincial recruitment coordinator long NSO office is up close to long you. Closing date e by long number 19 day belong moon April 2024. This bill talk survey e kiss him to go right e come long office belong national statistician. Say hello to the new Bessie Corn Beef. A freshly taste to add to your cooking menu. Just look at it. Yummy! It's affordable and now available in shops near you. Try our new Bessie Corn Beef now. It's better, it's best. Do you have what it takes? You think you could charge look them up next time or open fusion? Bring on 2024. We're still looking for the best singer yet. This year, Vocal Fusion is coming to you bigger, brighter, Drama, baby! Vocal Fusion 2024, we are looking forward to seeing you all this year. So bring on 2024, we want to see you there. Southern Pigeon Colombo Masse, Islands in the New Guinea Islands. You know, go what it takes, looking for your auditions. And for all those places where we've never been before, you get your auditions in so we can find the best singer in Papua New Guinea. Tukai Sports. Welcome to Tukai Sports. Due to heavy downpour of rain, a mini park in Port Moresby is now bulged with water, delaying the T20 cricket matches today. The matches today was delayed until and when the weather is fine. The wicked area is wet, causing cricket matches to pause for it to dry out. Other matches will continue after matches of today that was supposed to be completed today is played when the field is in condition. Updates of the matches will be up on MTV Live tomorrow. James Guken, Krukai Sports.
The busy sporting hub of the nation's capital, Bisini Park, deemed quiet due to downfalls last night and early this morning. The union softball, football and other fields were flooded with pools of water due to the rainfall experienced last night and this morning. Due to the weather forecast for today, all games were put on hold for a later day. PNG Boxing Union General Secretary Martin Leary said most national federations know what to do. They just need to improve financial support to run their programs consistently for the upcoming bouts. In an interview recently with Trukai Sports, Mr. Leary said they have to start preparing for 2027 now, getting regular top quality international competitions annually until the game's year. By then, athletes will be in fine form. Put in the competition last year, um, quality green time that we gave our boxes. In fact, that, that uh, event helped us identify areas that we needed to fix uh, before Solomon Islands. He added that PNG has a larger population and the talent base should be wider. With a larger economy to afford the funding capacity compared to other Pacific nations. Serious position, awkward position for, for the largest country in the Pacific. So uh, we want to keep our sport humble, uh, but sometimes the facts need to go out. And this is one of the facts. Boxing ended up holding Pacific or pushing uh, PNG up to the, to the top of the, uh, or to the bottom half of the medal stand to finish fifth. James Guken, Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. Business leaders, the 39th Australia Papua New Guinea Business Forum and Trade Expo from May 13th to 15th on Australia's dazzling Gold Coast. Dive into the immersive experience of our Trade Expo and showcase your brand, connect with like-minded professionals and seize the moment to tap into the flourishing bilateral business environment. But hurry, reserve your spot now to secure your stay at the Sheraton. Register today for the Australia PNG Business Forum. Up now with Telecom's Good Plan More Bundles. Subscribe to any of Telecom's More Bundle plans, ranging from 3 kina to 75 kina to enjoy unlimited on net calls, more SMS, more data with increased off net minutes. Choose from 8 exclusive plans, packed with more value to experience seamless communication with your family and friends. Telecom, connecting you anywhere, anytime. Terms and conditions apply. Dear son, you ask me how I live such a good life. Yes, I've had some good luck, like the day I met your mother. But it wasn't always that way. I've made some good choices too, like working hard and keeping my super with NAS fun. They looked after it for me, which meant I could concentrate on looking after my family. Living each day, knowing that when the time came, I'd be ready for tomorrow. Love, Dad. Welcome to the Eat Smart Campaign with Chef Jules Hena, where we meet the true heroes, the sons and the daughters of our soil, our farmers, the very people that help bring food to our tables. How good does this get? Unlocking the potential of agriculture, Chef Jules Hena will cook healthy, nutritious meals with the produce grown by our champions. 
This is the Eat Smart campaign. 8:30 p.m. tonight, right here on the number one to watch MTV. Buy more, win more, one time rules rise. We have half money mark below 300,000 kira. No can miss out. Buy 10 kg roots with them green rice. Cut them round in big pair roots logo on top of front and back rice. Now write the name, not number long, you long backside long M. Drop them inside long entry box, long store. Week one draw, one one winner by XM 500 kina. Week two draw, 1,000 kina. Week three draw, 2,000 kina. Now long week four draw, 5,000 kina. Second roots rice Facebook page, long kiss in more talks of it. Tabs the conditions is tough. Welcome back to Turkai Sports. Four Taekwondo athletes are qualified for the 2024 Paris Olympic Games after bagging four gold medals in the Oceania Olympic qualifiers in the Solomon Islands. The four athletes include Gibson Mara, men's 80 kg, Kevin Kasman, men's 68 kg, and Manega Tapari in the women's 67 kg, and Henny Loy, men's 70 kg category in the Paralympic. Returning with four gold and one bronze medal back home, coach Edward Kasman told Trukai Sports that the team had a good challenge and will work hard towards the Olympic Games. Um, challenging. Um, we've got two uh, able-bodied athletes, one fully confirmed, one to be confirmed in the next couple of days, and two para-athletes for the first time. Um, that's almost a success rate of over 80 percent. Um, again, first time for PNG, first time for the sport. Uh, there's still a lot of work to get done, so yeah, we're going to keep our head down and uh, hit the ground running. PNG Taekwondo Federation Vice President John Cholai said the Federation is proud of the achievement and looking forward to prepare for the next journey. Uh, taekwondo perspective, uh, this has been a long process. We've had to go through uh, about few years of uh, our own um, programs, starting with regional championships in NGI, then we did the Northern Region uh, Regional Championship, then we did the Southern Region Championships, followed with a National Championship, from where we actually selected our athletes, and then we put them to a, a training program uh, over the last few years, including uh, then up to this year especially, up to uh, Solomon Island Games, and from there we uh, close in on our athletes that we wanted to prepare for the Olympics. So the Solomon Island Games was basically our pathway towards the Olympics. And uh, I, I must say that at this point in time, we are elated. We are actually very, very happy. Coach Kasman also acknowledged PNG Olympic Committee, High Performance Center, Oceania Taekwondo Union, and all the people behind the team's success. Jonathan Sibona, Trukai Sports. Southern Region AFL development has successfully had its one-day carnival with over 500 kids from 10 different schools in Port Moresby. AFL PNG Southern Region Development Manager David Topeni said talents will be identified and selected through the program. Southern Regional um, Carnival kickstart um, today. Uh, we have, we have the other regions uh, doing their carnivals uh, during the school holiday. So, Southern Region is the first region that we run our, we are running our uh, carnival now. So, as you can see, we have lots of uh, kids standing up with their parents and um, go through with the um, level skills and um, agility training. Then we will have uh, match play at the end of the day. I was expecting um, 300 kids standing up today, but there's. 500 kids standing up in the morning to be part of our program. So we're not supposed to register new kids today, but just because they're already here, we have to give them opportunity. So we have our staffs on board also registering the kids at the same time, and then we run their testing at the same time. So uh, today, participants, there's 500 kids standing up to be part of our Southern Regional AFL Smart Start New Kick uh, Carnival in Port Mosby. Paradise Foods Limited Interim Sponsorship and Promotions Manager Venita Martin said, Paradise Foods Limited has been sponsoring the program for six years. Yeah, with that, I'd like to say thank you to the AFL PNG for leveraging um, this sponsorship. And we look forward to acti activating more awareness with our Smart Start, Smart Start Biscuit brand. Bring awareness of our, for our Smart Start Biscuit into communities and villages through, our, through the Sports AFL. With this Smart Start New Kick platform, 
Um, we've grown from strength to strength for the past six years. Um, and with the new kick, AFLPNG, that help us. Jonathan Sibona, Trukai Sports. That ends Trukai Sports. The Money Plus Weather Report is next. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. <laughs> True Kai Sports. Buy more, win more, one time rules rise. We have money belong 300,000 kira. No can miss out. Buy 10 kg roots with grain rice. Cut them round in big blue roots logo on top of front and back rice. Now write the name, none of us long be long backside long air. Drop them inside long entry box long store. Week one draw, one one winner by XC 500 kina. Week two draw, 1000 kina. Week three draw, 2000 kina. Now long week four draw, 5000 kina. Second roots rice Facebook page long kiss in more talk seven. Tabs the conditions is start. Be on board this revolution. Introducing our new range of devices and giveaway frenzy. Buy a device and get a free boombox and enjoy 7 days of free streaming to MGEMS. But that's not all. You will also receive 5 gigabytes every month for the next 6 months. That's a whooping 30 gigabytes of data. Don't miss this extraordinary opportunity. Head to your nearest telecom retail outlet to grab one today. Terms and conditions supply. Dear son, you ask me how I live such a good life. Yes, I've had some good luck, like the day I met your mother. But it wasn't always that way. I've made some good choices too, like working hard and keeping my super with Nasfan. They looked after it for me, which meant I could concentrate on looking after my family. Living each day, knowing that when the time came, I'd be ready for tomorrow. Love, Dad. The Smart Start School promotion is back this year. Win yourself one of 1,000 consolation prizes valued at 50 kina each nationwide. And the school with the highest number of valid entries per region will win a 44,000 kina Smart Start school grant. Simply collect three empty packets of Smart Start breakfast biscuits. Put in an envelope with your name, school and number on the envelope and drop in an entry box at a participating school near you. Promo ends on the 22nd of April. Contact us on Facebook to register your school today. Terms and conditions apply. Tension Business Leaders, the 39th Australia Papua New Guinea Business Forum and Trade Expo from May 13th to 15th on Australia's dazzling Gold Coast. Dive into the immersive experience of our Trade Expo and showcase your brand, connect with like-minded professionals and seize the moment to tap into the flourishing bilateral business environment. But hurry, reserve your spot now to secure your stay at the Sheraton. Register today for the Australia PNG Business Forum. It's almost time to crunch a month on Kai Time. If you're a warrior in your kitchen and want to be featured in the show, send us your video. The sky's the limit. It could be a family recipe. It could be a secret recipe. It could even be a simple recipe, just adding a few touches to make it special. Send us a video of your best recipe creation today and we'll feature it on Kai Time. Sports Max, 7.30 p.m. Wednesday, right here on the number one to watch, MTV. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. The weather forecast for the next 24 hours in the southern region Port Mosby City, cloudy with some showers and possible thunderstorms. Daru, some showers and possible thunderstorms. Karima, Alatau, and Popondeta, few showers and possible thunderstorms. In the Mumasa region, Lay City, partly cloudy with few showers. Medang, few showers with possible thunderstorm. 
WeWork partly cloudy with few showers possible, Vanimo some showers and possible thunderstorm. In the New Guinea Islands region, Lorengau partly cloudy with some showers, Kaveng some showers and possible thunderstorms, Kokopo and Rabaul some rain showers and possible thunderstorms, Kimbe some showers and possible thunderstorms, Buka rain showers and possible thunderstorms. In the Highlands region, Mount Hagen City, <coughs> cloudy periods with some rain showers and possible thunderstorm. Goroka, Bans and Kundiawa, rain showers and possible thunderstorms. Menditari and Wabeg, rain showers and possible thunderstorms. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that wraps up the new sports and weather for Sunday, the 7th of April 2024. From all of us here, pleasant viewing. Bye for now. This news program was proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Gold Nuggets. It's Smile O'Clock. It's Smile.